Hey, what's up, guys? It's Mike Tech back again with another video. And today we're going to be taking a look at FreeCAD 0.18. I'm going to be showing you how to uh, profile based on face or faces in FreeCAD 0.18 with the path utility. But before we get into that, I would greatly appreciate it if you guys can like, comment, and subscribe to this YouTube channel and watch all the rest of my videos because that helps me grow this YouTube channel and I really want to reach 1,000 subscribers. Um, I also greatly appreciate if you can follow me on all social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and check out my website, which is linked down below. So with me saying all of that, on to the video. So like I was saying, we're going to be profiling with a quick tutorial here. After you open up FreeCAD, you want to select Path from the drop down menu. Go over here to where it says, uh, well, create your job first, input all your tools, then come over here and it's going to say profile based on face or faces click that a box is going to appear where you can choose your tools from your tool controller list right here uh, I'm gonna go with this tool here tool number seven press ok now you're gonna have another box is going to appear on the left hand side It's gonna have your base geometry this is the first step right here selecting your base geometry whenever you select base geometry it needs to be on the same plane so basically you cannot you cannot select a top uh, a top face and then select a face that's on the side it doesn't work like that if you select a top face all the other faces that you select needs to also be on the top so if I zoom in this here um, let me change here let me change this to cat this here counts as a face where my mouse is this hole down in here also counts as a face so you can select any face that's on the same plane as the original face that you selected if you select something on the side you can select any other face that's on this side same thing goes for this side this side and it also goes for the bottom as well so there you go that's how you select or that's the limitations of what you can and cannot select when it comes down to putting stuff inside this list of base geometries and to select something to add it to this list is pretty simple select it is going to turn a, a very uh, light greenish color and then just press add and then if you want to remove something just press whatever it is just highlight the with the name or whatever and just press remove and then clear just clears all the, everything that's inside of this so that's how you do that uh, moving down to the next thing you have your depths now this is pretty uh, self-explanatory but I'm going to go ahead and explain it to you anyway just for anybody who doesn't know. Um, start depth is where you're going to start. So that is the thickness of the stock. This stock is about one millimeter above the part. So it's going to start at one millimeter. Um, final depth is going to be zero because after you get down from this one millimeter, after you cut down, it's going to be at zero, which is going to be the top of the part, which is that's where it's going to stop. Um, and then your step down basically determines how far it steps down for each cut. So I always change mine to 0 0.2. That's where I like to cut at 0 0.2. Um, that's going to be my step down there. Um, if there's any other norm, number, uh, number here in this box, most likely it was determined by the diameter of the tool that you have selected. So the default step down is going to be the diameter of the tool. If the tool is 10 millimeters, the step down will be 10, 10 millimeters. Obviously, you probably don't want to keep it like that because that might break your tool. And you might want to change it, but uh, that's up to you. And like I said, to change it, you just click on it. Or you click on this little blue thing here, and then uh, it's going to open up. And then you just press OK, and then it's going to be in there. So that's how you change that. On to the next one, heights. Um, basically, you have your safety height and your clearance height. Safety height is pretty uh, basic. It's when it moves from one spot to another, there will be there's a certain uh, height that is going to retract up before it moves. That is your safe height, which for for me is three millimeters. So it will move up three millimeters before going over to the next um, profile or the next uh, operation. Um, your clearance height is normally when it moves from side to side. Um, well, from 
one side of the part to another side of the part or when it's changing between operations so let's say I do like a profile operation and then I go back and I do like a pocketing operation it will normally retract up um, five millimeters which is gonna be my clearance height so it's gonna do the profile and then after it's gonna do gets done doing the profile it will retract up five millimeters and then head over to the next operation which for me will be more like a pocketing operation to cut out these holes but that's what that is safe height is when it moves from spot to spot and then clearance height is when it moves from one operation over to another operation on one side of the part to another side of the part so that's where your clearance height is when it's making really big movements it, it uses the clearance height um, next one here is basically where you select all the, the fine details here so you got your tool controller you can change all your tools here whatever tool you want to use cut um, side is basically going to be either the inside or outside we'll talk more about this later after we generate the path direction clockwise or counterclockwise that is not for the spindle um, what counterclockwise or clockwise um, what this is going to do this little box here this is going to determine the direction that it moves across the part so you can it, it can either move clockwise which it which would be from the left to the right to the bottom to the bottom of the left hand side and then back up to the right to the left hand side top so it will move around like this how my mouse is moving um, counterclockwise obviously is going to be the other way so it will start over here at the left then move up then move over to well it will start at the right move up over to the left down um, left corner and then back over to the right so that would be counterclockwise so that is what direction is for and then um, extra offsets if you want to implement any extra offsets so if you want the the tool to be an extra one millimeter away from the corner or whatever you can put that in um, if you want to I don't know why you want to but whatever though uh, start point basically that determines that where it's gonna start so um, if you this is checked it will use the the um, what is it, the origin it will use the origin to start every time so that's basically where that's for I normally leave this unchecked because I don't need to use that for right now um, use compensation basically that will compensate for the diameter of the tool so that way the edge of the tool is what's cutting the edge um, if you don't use this you will see that the center of the tool will be cutting the edge which I will demonstrate later on in the once we generate the path and then whole circle and perimeter we will talk more about that after you generate the path which I'm going to do now by pressing apply so after we press apply now you will see that there is a little green line around the outside of this part right here now this is the path that has been generated now you don't see anything for these perimeter here or around these circles here we're going to talk about that so if we go to holes press apply now you see that it has generated a path for all of these um, perimeters here all of these edges here it has generated a path now if you take and you do circles and you take off holes you press apply nothing now you don't see anything around any of these circles here even though it technically it is a circle now circle only works if there is a part that is protruding from the from the surface that you have selected so we are going to do a profile on the top part if there is nothing protruding up um, away from the top then it's not going to do anything here circle it does not circle does not do anything for these things here because this is not a circle this is a hole so if you want to do a perimeter here you want to collect you want to select hole not circle so let's undo the circle and then press hole and now you see that there is a path here um, use compensation Let's unselect this, zoom out, and now you will see a big difference here when I press apply. Now you see that the green line is on the edge. So basically, when I cut now, it's going to be cutting with the center of the tool on the edge, which is going to be doing the profile that way. Um, I don't like doing that. I like cutting with the edge of the tool on the edge. That makes more sense. It gives you a nice cleaner cut across this edge here. 
do I love using um, compensation for that reason. Um, and I think that's pretty much it. Perimeter is pretty self, pretty self-explanatory. If you take off the perimeter, it's not gonna do a profile across this perimeter here. So that's what that right there is. But I'm gonna leave that turned on because that's what I need to do. I need to do a cut across the perimeter. So there you go. That is how to use the profile tool in FreeCAD Path 0.18. Um, I really don't think there's anything else left to really talk about. I think I talked about everything so far. Um, so yeah, that's it. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this quick little tutorial here. Um, if you did, like, comment, and subscribe to see more videos just like this one. And I, like I said, I would really appreciate if you could follow me on social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and check out my website. And check out the rest of my videos. So yeah, that's going to be it for today. Yeah, peace out. Bye.